I think you all know what time it is. It's time for some more trivia and celebrity bullshit. <laughs> Chris Pratt. Okay, listen, if you clicked on this video, you know who Chris Pratt is. Let's not beat around the bush here. If you don't know who Chris Pratt is, then why the hell did you click on this video? I don't think I need to go on about Chris's history, how he got a bunch of big roles and is now a huge A-list actor in Hollywood right now. Everyone knows this by now, especially if you live in America. But when it comes to success and popularity, there's always a price to pay. The price being, there will always be people who just don't like you. Whether it be actual hate, envy, or whatever, it always happens when something or someone is popular. And it's no different with Chris. There are tons of people who just don't like Chris. People who think he's overrated, or he's oversaturated, or he's just not a good actor. And all those are valid reasons depending on the circumstances. I mean, I think he's alright. He's not the best actor in the world. He's no Ryan Gosling. <laughs> He's a decent 7 out of 10 actor in my book. I've seen better, and I've definitely seen worse. But in the case of Chris Pratt, there is a place on the internet where hatred of him runs rampant. That place being none other than our good old toxic social media website, Twitter. Twitter does not like Chris Pratt. Actually, you don't want- no, 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 that's not strong enough. Twitter hates Chris Pratt. Actually, no, 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 I still don't think you get it. Twitter really, 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 really fucking hates Chris Pratt. Out of every celebrity, out of any famous person anywhere in the world, Twitter despises Chris Pratt's existence. They just don't hate him. They want him gone. They want his career gone, and they want him on the streets. They don't want to look at his stupid white male face in anything ever again. I have never seen a website hate a celebrity more than how much Twitter hates Chris Pratt. I think Bill Cosby gets a better reception on Twitter than he does. Hell, I think Vladimir Putin gets a better reception on Twitter than Chris does. It has gotten to the point where if Chris does anything, literally anything, Twitter will flame and roast him for it. He could just walk down the street and Twitter would find some way to hate him for it. You see him? See him walking. He just keeps fucking walking. I don't like him. He, he's an asshole. He wears his underwear backwards. He has eyeballs for testicles. But the question is, why? Why does Twitter hate this man so much? What has he done to piss them off so damn much? Is it because he's a straight, white, Christian male? Well, no, 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 that, that can't be it. There's dozens of other Christian white male actors who don't get nearly as much shit as Chris does. Matthew McConaughey is a straight white Christian male, and he still doesn't get as much shit as Chris does. For some reason, Twitter has really singled out Chris as the worst man on the planet. From what I've seen, a lot of it has to do with misinformation, manipulation, and misunderstandings. Out of every single celebrity or influencer Twitter has attempted to cancel, Chris has got to hold the record. Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle, J.K. Rowling have not got shit on how many times Twitter has ran Chris's career and life through the mud. It is unbelievable just how many times Twitter has gotten riled up on him over the most trivial shit. But what shocks me the most is just how nobody has kept track of this. Nobody has really archived any of this because to me, this is fascinating. An entire website with hundreds of thousands of people on it just despising one man for merely existing. And I'm here to change that. It took me hours and hours of research, but I believe I've compiled all the significant events where Twitter has attempted to cancel Chris Pratt in his career. I want a nice, clean compilation explanation for all these events for historical purposes. I have no life, yes, I know. I wouldn't be making this if I did. And yeah, I know I'm basically defending a millionaire who doesn't even know I exist. Well, guess what? All millionaires are still human. They still eat, sleep, and shit like the rest of us. Except Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know what planet he's from. The ribs and the brisket need to be eaten. Chris, despite probably blowing his nose with $100 bills, still has feelings and a family like the rest of us. And I don't think he deserves all the shit he gets from Twitter for just for, well, existing. I'm really just doing this for educational purposes and my own entertainment, if I'm being honest. This is for my own entertainment and anyone who happens to stop by to see it. 
So, sit back and watch. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Trivia and Celebrity Bullshit! <laughs> this is gonna be a long one. Alright, so looking at Twitter... Uh... Anyway, so going through Chris Press would... Uh... <laughs> the info I found about where this all... Uh... <sighs> so, in order to make this video, I had to bite the bullet and make a Twitter account. I hope you all understand the sacrifices I made to make this video. I'm not using this account. God, no. I don't want depression. This is merely for gathering information and nothing else. Anyway, all things have to start from somewhere. That means this hatred for Chris had to have come from some place somewhere on Twitter. Before 2019, he only really made certain groups of people mad. Most notably, he got shit from a bunch of vegan groups for being an avid hunter. Also, got a bunch of people on him after Kevin James had a heart attack and wanted people to pray for him, causing the Fedora tippers of Twitter to go off on him. But really, all these are tame in just niche groups of people. There was a nexus point where a good portion of Twitter just decided to collectively start shitting on Chris Pratt every day of the week. And after all the research I've done, I have found where all that originated from. It actually came from another actor. I don't mean to point fingers, but I'm pointing fingers. All the hatred that has been directed to Chris Pratt that has been going on for years now was all started by Elliot Page. On February 8th, 2019, Chris went on Stephen Colbert and talked about his farm, his faith in God, and the, and the Daniel Fast diet. You know, it's safe, sanitized Hollywood schlock, nothing really of note here. However, Elliot had different thoughts in mind, and in response to this video, made a snarky tweet that would kickstart everything into motion. After this tweet was made, people were quick to respond. Not only were they quick to respond, they were very, very quick to jump into dogpile action. Tons of people responding to Elliot's tweet, tons of people going to Chris's own Twitter to harass him and question him, all sorts of drama crap going on here. Eventually, the heat got to Chris, and he had to respond to Elliot. He simply said, The church I go to opens its doors to everyone. And of course, Elliot was ready with another snarky-ass tweet. He will continue to dogpile on Chris some more, people flung shit and insults, but ultimately, it went nowhere. You're gonna be hearing that a lot. It went nowhere. Eventually, everything died back down and it was back to the status quo. But I wanna focus on one thing real quick. What about this church Elliot mentioned? How is it really? Well, a lot of people believe it to be Hillsong Church, a huge mega church that tons of people and celebrities go to, which apparently supports stuff like gay conversion therapy. I can't confirm any of that, I've never been there, nor can I find any actual definitive evidence of this online. You see this everywhere regarding Chris. It's still brought up to this day. Except there's one prop of that, and I want to address this first and foremost, right here, right now, because I'm sick of seeing it. Chris Pratt does not attend Hillsong Church. There is no evidence Chris Pratt has ever been a member or even attended Hillsong Church. None. Zip. Nada. All the research I've done, I can't find anything about Chris ever actually going there or even attending once. Hell, all the info I've found has pointed to the fact that he's never been there. Here's a post from one of the pastors of Hillsong mentioning that Chris Pratt has never been there. Here's a post from Chris's Instagram in 2017, mentioning the actual church he does go to. 
So I had this thing happen to me today. It was really cool. Someone came up to me and said, hey, Chris, uh, I have this question for you. I promise this isn't like a humble brag or something, but he said, you know, with the things going on in your life, how, how do you keep the faith? And I was like, boom! I said, I read, I read books by my, my pastor, Chad Veach, at Zoe Church in L.A. I find his, his books, his, his book, Faith Forward Future, to be very helpful. So that's the actual church he goes to, a church in LA named Zoe Church. People also like to bring up that this church is related to Hillsong, but yet again, that is also false. There is no direct connection between Zoe Church and Hillsong. I have been on their website for both churches and can find next to no mention between the two of them. Here, on the Hillsong site, on their list of family churches, there is no Zoe Church anywhere on here. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. That's a lie. There is a Zoe Church on here. But guess what? It's a completely different church in Bulgaria. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? There is only one mention of Zoe Church on Hillsong's website, and it's on a page telling us the pastor who left Hillsong to start it. And that is the only connection between Hillsong and Zoe Church, a pastor who left Hillsong to create Zoe. He did say he did take inspiration from Hillsong when making it, but that's it. Now let me ask you, did that inspiration also have to include homophobia? If you think that, well you would just buy from the start then, weren't you? And looking on Zoe Church's website, there's no mention of Hillsong anywhere on it either, or anything involving LGBT people or anything of the sorts for that matter. Ayo, where the gay converts therapy tab at? So yeah, that's the only connection between the two churches. Anybody who tells you that they're directly connected doesn't know what they're talking about. There's also one more thing I want to talk about, and that's about Chad Veach himself. I don't know the guy and I can't find much online about him, but Pratt sings nothing but high praises about the man. There is one last aspect people like to bring up, and that's about Chad being a funder for a religious movie about sexual brokenness made by a different guy. Whatever the hell that means. For some reason, some people like to use this as another point against Pratt himself and how he's supposedly homophobic. But think about this for a second. Chris Pratt listened to a preacher who gave money to a guy who made a movie about sexual brokenness, therefore Chris Pratt is homophobic. What, what, what level of guilt by association are we on right now? I don't even know where this Hillsong Church stuff even came from. Elliot never even said what church Chris even attended. Did people just jump to conclusions based on nothing? That's gonna be another running theme too. So yeah, that's about all I got on that subject. Chris got a lot of blowback, but it did eventually die down. Elliot probably didn't intend to make Chris the most hated man on Twitter with this snarky tweet, but this is, from what I can tell, where it all started. Elliot has nothing to do with the rest of the controversies. The rest of that is on the individual Twitter users giving Chris problems and shit for the most petty of things. He's only responsible for making a good portion of Twitter despise Chris's existence, and he didn't cause Chris any problems directly after this incident. Why does this remind me of that Turtle Club scene from Master of Disguise? No, 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 no. Chill time um, coming. You know what? <laughs> and, and name is just... So, a few months passed, and while Twitter was still on the homophobic church thing, oh, they'll never let that go, trust me, Chris moved on to other things. Chris was out and about one day with his wife on July 16th when someone snapped a photo of him. Nothing too out of the ordinary until people on Twitter noticed his shirt. Zoom in. Enhance. 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 This is a photo of Chris wearing a shirt with the Gatson flag on it. For those who don't know, the Gatson flag is a very controversial flag on Twitter. It has been used by a many a people of all political leanings, but to a good portion of Twitter, if you wear the flag, you are a racist Republican who watches Fox News and hates people who aren't straight. 
Combine this with the accusations of going to a homophobic church, this of course led to Chris getting shanked left and right from Twitter users which only fueled their hatred of him. Of course, this piece of cloth probably made in some sweatshop in China by some poor factory workers for pennies had many an article written about it, because journalists have no shame these days. Again, a lot of people were mad about it, some called for Chris's removal and everything just for wearing a shirt, but alas, it went nowhere. So yeah, this one, uh, this one's pretty simple. It's a shirt. Twitter no like shirt. Twitter get mad. Chris Pratt bad. So I contemplated putting this in the video because it's basically a nothing burger. L literally, it's a nothing burger. This one's food related. But then I really thought about it and I realized a lot of these are nothing burgers because Twitter will get pissed at Chris Pratt for literally anything. So I decided to include it anyway. It got like three articles on the matter and that's good enough for me. Chris and his wife were having dinner and his wife decided to cook him a bagel bite. The bagel bite did not turn out well. So Chris, thinking it was funny, posted to Instagram with a snarky message to poke fun at her. It's harmless, they're still married, they love each other. Twitter thought otherwise. This snarky Instagram remark? Well, clearly, this is a sign he's a misogynist! Oh, not only does he hate his wife, he hates all women everywhere. This homophobic racist dare poke fun at a burnt bagel bite? You're lucky she even cooked for you at all, you entitled Bible thumper! Chalk this up on the list. Not only does he hate gay people and people of color, but now women too. Let's see what else is added to the board. Oh, what else will this madman do in the future? So yeah, Twitter accused this man of hating women because he made fun of a burnt bagel bite. But none of you would fucking eat it. Cowards, the lot of you. Okay, so to my shock, 2020 was a mostly calm year in terms of events where Twitter users dogpiled Chris Pratt. He still got called every phobinist ever created, but that's par for the course. I guess people just had more on plate that year. Nothing of substance really happened until near the end of the year, so I've decided to take the time and detail one of the things people like to bring up about Chris, and that would be who he follows on Twitter and Instagram. Chris follows a tiny few controversial and problematic people on these websites, and by tiny I mean you can count them on one hand. So, people like to bring up the fact Chris follows these people, he therefore believes in the same views and philosophies these people have. That's enough for some people, I guess. Now, if there was any evidence Chris is a right-winger or a Republican, this is the only thing that even comes close to him. And even then, it's pretty weak. I mean, is that all it takes? All you have to do is follow three, count them, three people on Twitter. Time to put your spooky ghost costume on, Chris. I know these people are really controversial figures, but anyone can follow these people with a click of a button. And besides, I want you to look, just, just look at that number. Look at all the people he follows. It's in the triple digits compared to the four people Twitter uses cherry pick to use as evidence he's some sort of right wing bigot. And besides, look at some of the other people he follows, some way on the other end of the spectrum. Because as we all know, Brie Larson is well known for her right-wing political views. He follows a ton of his fellow co-stars, some of which are outspoken liberals and left-leaning people. He also follows accounts for movies he's been in, no doubt for shilling purposes. Maybe, just maybe, you might be looking into things a bit too much when you try to judge others based on who they're following on Twitter. It's not that hard to follow someone on Twitter, people. So like I said, 2020 was a dry year for any significant events involving Chris and Twitter's feud. That is, however, until October, when things started to heat right back up. Oh Jesus! It was October 2020, and it was the hot seat for election season. Which dinosaur was going to be the president for the next four years? Seeing all the talk about voting all over Twitter, Quis Quis Chris decided to make a quirky little tweet to vote for. Onward for best animated film that he started earlier that year. Twitter did not take this tweet well. Now I will fully admit, 
This was kind of stupid of Chris to make this tweet. Not only for the fact that no one asked for it, but also for the fact that it was shilling an incredibly average Pixar film that just kind of left everyone's mind after seeing it. I mean it, this movie is painfully average. It's like a 6 out of 10. It's not bad, but it's not memorable either. I've seen way better, especially from Pixar. But really and truly, this tweet was harmless. It was just kind of dumb and unnecessary. But Jesus Christ, some of the reactions to this tweet, look at them! Some of these people act like he just shot their fucking dog! This pissed a ton of people off. A ton of people whose lives are extremely involved in politics have a stick up their ass because of it and hate anything that isn't 100% serious. But let's not beat around the bush here. A lot of the people getting pissed at Chris over this are the same ones who already think he's every phobe and ist in the book. And this is just another thing to use to hate him for it. If any other actor made this tweet, they'd just be told that it was in bad taste. Not Chris though. He's being called privileged in a supremacist just for making a very cringy tweet about a children's film. <sighs> Poor man can't even shill without being called a privileged bigot for it. So by now, I think you've got the pattern. Chris does something incredibly minor, Twitter has their own views and beliefs about him, and then they use a minor thing he does as evidence to further validate their own views and beliefs about him, and then try to cancel him. But this one is a very special case. The things that have pissed Twitter off. He goes to church, he wore a shirt, and he made fun of a bagel bite. But <laughs> what I'm about to tell you about is especially loopy. It's the hot seat for political season, and a bunch of MCU veterans decide to hold a fundraiser for Joe Biden Soros and the Democratic Party. Tons of big names like Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Robert Downey Jr., a good chunk of the big names in the MCU. They're all riding with Biden. However, despite the whole event being for a special dinosaur, sadly, our well-known dinosaur trainer, Chris, wasn't there to be there for him. He was absent from the event. This, again, sent Twitter into an uproar. They believed because Chris wasn't at this event, that meant he didn't support the Democratic Party and that he was actually a Trump supporter. Thousands of tweets being made, some getting tens of thousands of likes about Chris being a Trump supporter. Well, without any evidence, mind you, this shit is spreading like wildfire. All because he wasn't at this event. So yes, this time, Twitter isn't getting mad at Chris for doing something incredibly minor. This time, they're getting mad at Chris because he didn't do something incredibly minor. He simply existed, and this made Twitter mad. Chalk that up on the list of things Twitter thinks Chris is. A Trump supporter. All because he didn't attend this event. It got so bad that the Russo brothers had to come out and explain why Chris wasn't at the event. Because he wasn't asked. He was filming Jurassic World Dominion in Europe and didn't have the time to. So yeah, he was busy with other dinosaurs at the time than to deal with the one in America. So really, this is yet again Twitter having their own beliefs about him and then something incredibly minor happens, or in this case something minor didn't happen, and then Twitter using said event to validate their own beliefs about him. The cycle repeats. You know, Chris Hemsworth wasn't at the event. Tom Holland wasn't at the event either. Hell, neither was Dave Bautista. Why did I see anyone calling them Trump supporters? Why was just Chris singled out for this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Twitter fucking hates this man's guts. That's why. And it's about to get even worse. As you can tell, October 2020 was not a good month for Chris Pratt. Two major controversies on Twitter have already transpired, and here comes a third one. A screenwriter asked Twitter which Hollywood Chris had to go. The choices were Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, Chris Pine, and Chris Evans. Over 7,000 people reacted to this tweet. Now, I want you to guess. Take a wild guess who they chose. Who do you think they chose? Why am I even asking you this? You know the answer. Of course, the most overwhelming answer was Chris Pratt. This was a turning point. 
This is when the hate for Chris on Twitter went into overdrive. People started finding that tweet Elliot made last year and started spreading it around, adding way more fuel to the fire. It was just tons of people spitting venom at him, this poor, poor millionaire. It got to the point where the actors from the MCU and even his wife actually had to come to his defense. His wife said people were being mean and they needed to stop spreading so much hate. Mark Ruffalo called him a solid guy and Robert Downey Jr. called out tons of people for casting stones. And of course, Twitter being Twitter who praised these actors for being on the Biden string the previous day immediately turned on said actors with the if you're not with us you're against us mentality. I also saw a lot of people bitching that no one came to the fence of Brie Larson when she was getting shit for playing Captain Marvel and saying that we need more diversity in the MCU. People joking that Chris Pratt was a Trump supporter. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure joking. Yeah, I'm sure they were. That is a decent argument on why no one came to the defense of Brie, but they did for Pratt, despite Brie getting tons of shit thrown at her for something so petty. But there is one difference between Chris and Brie in this situation. One major difference. Brie would sometimes go out of her way to antagonize people for this kind of stuff. I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. Gee, I wonder why people got pissed at her for this. I mean, of course the fucking bear is gonna get pissed when you poke it with a stick! Meanwhile, Chris, to my recollection and research, has not antagonized or insulted anyone. He has not gone out of his way to single anyone out or insult them, despite the tons of shit he's gotten over, well, basically nothing. All the hate towards him is just assumptions. All he's done is defend his case and nothing else. Of course, this event would lead to no one getting blacklisted or removed, so Chris Pratt gets to live another day. This will, of course, piss Twitter off even further and want his failure to become a reality even more. From this point forward, a ton of Twitter users will make it their purpose in life to cancel Chris Pratt, and they will do anything they possibly can to achieve that goal. It's now February of 2021, and as usual, Twitter is doing its usual thing with Pratt. Roasting him, calling him all sorts of phobes and ists. But it's usual internet drama dribble. Nothing really gets accomplished, it's just people wanting updates. That is, until one user was desperately thirsting for some clout. Some sweet, delicious clout. But how does one get said clout? Roast Chris, call him a homophobe for the 5,000th time? Bring up his shirt or the burnt bagel bite? No. This user has something far, far more scummy in mind. Up until now, I've made the effort of keeping a lot of these identities hidden because I have no idea what Reddit Nick Bear detectives might be watching this and go and harass any individual I've shown, despite them shooting on a man for something they've only heard, never seen. But you know the saying, two wrongs don't make a right. Let's keep that in mind. But I'm making an exception here for two reasons. One, the account that did this doesn't even exist anymore, so you can't even find them, even if you wanted to. And two, the thing this person did is so heinous and scummy, they aren't worthy of keeping their identity a secret. Now, it may seem wrong to pick on one individual for just one tweet, but this tweet went semi-viral, got a few articles written about it, so I think it's worthy of including in this video. Anyway, this person made this tweet saying, rest in peace, I think not and included three tweets supposedly made by Chris himself. Ignore the first one, we'll come back to it in a minute. The second tweet says this. I feel like somebody smarter than me can make a joke about this. I mean, what's wrong with this? It says Bank of America, and it says Made in China. That's ironic. That's, that's a joke, that's, that's kind of funny. What's wrong with that? Is it racist because China has Chinese people in it? I don't get this one. Let's look at the third tweet. Hashtag Miss Universe, in a way, they all look like Miss Hungry. Uh, again, uh, wh what's wrong with this? What's wrong with it? Uh, actually, you know what? Let's look at the Miss Universe pageant of 2012. Oh, dear Christ! God, some of these women look like you could break them in half by blowing hot air on them. Okay, so this tweet isn't even a joke. It's just an objective fact. And now, finally, I want to address this one. 
This is the big one, the one that caused it to go semi-viral. So, as you can imagine, spouting that racial slur at any point is basically the eighth of the seven deadly sins, and is a nail in the coffin for any person with a career if they said it at any point in their lives. And here is Chris saying it. So this was last year, how does Crystal have a career? Well, you see, that's very simple, my fellow associates. That would be because this tweet is not real. People have looked through his Twitter history, his profile, went on internet archives, and there is no evidence of this tweet ever having been made. Even Chris himself came out and said it was fake. Hell, a Twitter advisor came out and said it was most likely fake, which it is. So if it's not real, there's only one explanation. The person who made this entire tweet made up themselves. They completely fabricated it all for the sake of clout and running Chris's name through the mud. Now, the tweet no longer exists. Twitter actually composed itself for once and a lot of people called this person out for being so damn petty and flat out making shit up. It did fool a few people though. Hell, some out here knew it was fake but was still praising the person for doing it. That's slander. It is not. I resent that. Slander is spoken and print is like I think people need to realize just how easy it is to make a fake, well, anything on the internet. There exist so many tools and programs that can make things look however anybody wants. This is a double-edged sword. It can lead to some amazing creations, but it can also lead to shit like this. Oh yeah, it's gamer time. A Nintendo Direct that was hotly anticipated came out on September 3rd, and during said Direct, they revealed the Mario movie release date, Delayed! and its cast. The first thing, the first thing we see... First, of course, is Mario, who will be played by Chris Pratt. He's so cool. This is comedy gold. The entire internet, not just Twitter, had a field day with this. People were laughing it up at the entire cast. Chris Pratt as Mario, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser. It was just a hoot and a holler. However, Twitter, compared to other websites, were actually furious that Chris got the role as Mario. Now, now, some, some were actually upset that he was playing Mario and not Charles Martinet, Mario's actual voice actor, which honestly is an honest reason to be upset over. They have that right. But the majority of Twitter was mad that Chris, despite their best efforts, was still getting movie roles. This man they've labeled every mean and hateful thing they possibly could, and he was still getting work. So, how, how do they vent their frustrations? Bitching and memes. What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. Now, some of these memes were tongue-in-cheek goofy, some were actually having fun with it. But some were clearly just more memes to piss on Chris and find more ways to call him a bigot. Memes of Chris hitting gay people, pics of Mario reading the Bible. Okay, not gonna lie. This one got me to laugh. Congrats, Twitter user. You, 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 you get my updo. This is what everyone was talking about for like three days straight. Chris Pratt was going to be Mario. THE Mario. Now, the movie still hasn't come out yet as I'm recording this, but I pray it'll be good and not some safe, bouncy schluck like the rest of Illumination stuff. Garfield and Friends! Garfield and Friends! And pay attention, there'll be a test at the end. Chris wasn't done yet with the infuriating casting choices. Already having been cast as Mario, a childhood icon, he decided to get another role of yet another childhood icon, our favorite fat lasagna-eating cat, Garfield. 
Garfield has sort of become this weird famous icon on both the internet and for boomers, as boomers remember the old comics and cartoons, but for millennials and Gen Z, he's been a meme in various formats. He's transformed into this weird eldritch abomination. And also these weird abstract art projects like Garfield and Lasagna Cat. You tricked me. There's nothing in this present. You promised me you wouldn't peek. That's what you get for peeking. Well, thanks for nothing! So, Garfield has been twisted and molded into something both boomers and zoomers can enjoy. And when it was announced a new Garfield movie was coming out, and Chris has gotten the role to play him, the internet and Twitter alike lost its fucking shit. Again! Tons of articles coming out about this, and the memes were non-stop. Chris Pratt is going to play this character, play that character, he was going to play all your childhood icons, he's going to play the father you never had. Everyone had a good old yuck about this, once more. But of course, there was the Twitter users with sticks up their asses, still grinding their teeth and angry, our Trump-supporting, bagel-biting, Joe biden hating Chris Pratt was still getting film roles, and all their bitching was for nothing. This just angered them to their boredom point. I can read some of these tweets and feel the heat coming from my screen from how flaming mad some of these people are. It's both funny and sad at the same time. This man, just getting film roles, infuriates people so much they will be willing to do anything to ruin his day. And all of this rage, all of this anger at Chris, would finally come to fruition in the worst way possible. Two days after the Garfitting, Chris decided to make a tribute to his wife on Instagram a few weeks before her birthday. This is the post in question. She's given me an amazing life, a gorgeous healthy daughter. She chews so loudly that sometimes I put my earbuds to drown it out, but that's love. She helps me with everything. In return, periodically I open a jar of pickles. That's the trade. Her heart is pure and it belongs to me. My greatest treasure right next to my Ken Griffey Jr. Upper Deck Rookie Card, which if you know, you know is saying a lot. It's her birthday in about six weeks, so if I don't get her anything, I'll tell her to look back on this post. Love you, honey. Heart, heart. Aw, oh, well ain't that just cute. I mean, he may hate Bagel Bites and women in general, but he really seems to love his wife. This is a cute, harmless tribute to his wife. I bet people really love this post and found absolutely nothing wrong with it. The backlash was swift and immense. But I don't understand. This was a tribute to his wife. What the hell is everyone so angry about? Well, this actually requires context into Chris's personal marriage and family life. So bear with me. I've been avoiding talking about Chris's own dating life because really, it's just more celebrity drama. Celebrity marriages and divorces happen all the time, and anyone into that stuff is going to have their own opinion on it. But this time, Twitter took it upon themselves to attack Chris for it. I mean, they've already attacked every other aspect about him. Why not his marriage and his relationship with his wife and children? Before Chris was married to Katherine Schwarzenegger, he was in a previous marriage with Anna Ferris. They were married for a few years and had a son. However, things just didn't work out between the two, and they got divorced in 2017. He then met Catherine the next year, they got married, had a daughter, and moved on. The point of interest here is Chris's son he had with Anna, Jack Pratt. Jack was born with serious health issues, and it caused a great deal of concern with both Chris and Anna. They said they prayed and prayed that he would come through all right, and in the end, he did. Chris has spoken a great deal about his son and how much he loves him, even after divorcing Anna. But since then, in his new marriage, he had a daughter with Catherine, praising her and giving her credit for a healthy, beautiful daughter. That one word, healthy. Twitter, who has been coddled and conditioned to expect the absolute worst from Chris, get this, ready for this? I, 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 I bet you've never heard this before. <clears throat> Twitter assumed 
This was a jab at his previous wife and his son. He was actually secretly mocking his ex-wife and son because they weren't healthy and Catherine and his new daughter were. And then a new ist was added to the list. He was now ableist because he was using the word healthy to describe his new daughter and clearly mocking his son for not being born healthy. Anna Faris was actually trending on Twitter because hundreds of people were apologizing to her for Chris apparently mocking her and their own son. God, this is, this is pitiful. I have to say, out of everything I've talked about today, this is without a doubt the worst thing Twitter has done to this man. How low do you have to go to accuse a man of mocking his own son for being born unhealthy just for some clout? Were people really this upset over the Mario and Garfield thing? They just wanted to get it out of their system? And this is what it led to? Chris, of course, responded to this. This made him depressed. I, I mean, I can't imagine why this would make him depressed. Not a clue. To bed last night really kind of upset and depressed and woke up feeling crappy and i didn't want to work out i didn't want to i knew though that if i put on my my christian music playlist and i got out in the woods and ran that i'd feel better but i just didn't want to and i did it anyways and gosh was i right it felt amazing but he eventually got over it like everything else that's already happened to him but seriously, this is a fucked up situation. This man just wanted to post a tribute to his wife and daughter, and Twitter somehow found a way to twist it into this secret, ableist jab at his ex-wife and son, who he's already stated a number of times he loves. This really goes to show you just how much Twitter fucking despises this man. And a lot of these people believe they're doing the right thing, calling Chris out for ableism, when in reality they just made a man depressed for merely praising his wife. Social media really was a mistake. Twitter has tried everything. They have tried everything to get this man blacklisted and his career ruined. They have called him every single Istin phobe they possibly could. They accused him of insulting his handicapped son. They tried flat out making shit up about him, but nothing has worked. He's still getting film roles and he's still popular. The clout chasers are desperate. They want to take this titan down. They want to be the ones known for bringing down one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. But what can they do? They then went back to the drawing board. After enough determination and decision making, it was then decided what Twitter does best when canceling someone. Dig up a decade old tweet and use it against them 10 years later when it's no longer relevant. But what can they use? He doesn't really have anything that they can consider problematic. Uh, what's a hot button issue right now? Um, police brutality? Perfect. This was the tweet they dug up. A joke about how Chris would be a corrupt police officer if he wasn't an actor. This tweet is absolutely nothing. There is nothing offensive here. It is a bland, forgettable joke. Anyone can look at this and tell. Twitter was well aware it was, and their goal was very, very obviously to pretend to be offended for the sake of getting him in trouble. <gasps> Chris, how could you? Do you not know that that's a hot button issue? at Nintendo. Do you see this sheet? Remove him from the Mario movie immediately. That's so offensive. How could you? You're done now. Looking at these tweets, it's not about them actually being offended. It's just them being joyful that they can use it against them for the sake of that succulent cloud. They tweet at news outlets and big companies to look at it, but no one really knows except the Twitter users themselves, the ones trying to get him blacklisted. All of these fake as hell crocodile tears fell on deaf ears. But one important person was listening. The most important of them all. Within 24 hours of the clock chasers finding the decade old tweet, the tweet was gone. Chris had noticed people making a fuss about this absolutely nothing tweet. And to avoid any future drama, he just up and deleted it. Operation Irrelevant was a complete failure. Except Chris himself, 
Nobody of interest cared. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. After that operation failed, things were quiet for a bit. Nothing major really happened for a while, that is, until a trailer for the newest cape shit, Thor Love and Thunder, came out. It was a by-the-numbers trailer, quips and snark all the way, oh, humor, action, etc. But in the trailer itself, <gasps> there's our favorite Chris in the Thor Love and Thunder trailer! <gasps> this, of course, caused some shock and caused some anger. People were getting mad that, oh, oh Chris Pratt, homophobe, all these hits, etc. You, you get the point by now. But there was one scene a lot of people really fixated on. Just look into the eyes of the people that you love. Not me. What? Just listening. Could this be some homoeroticism and my cape shit? What would Winnie the Pooh say? Or maybe it's just a joke to make people laugh. Twitter took it as the former. This, yeah, this time Twitter wasn't mad. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. They were still mad, but they were able to channel that into laughter because they were convinced that this scene was put here by the director just to take the piss on crap because, you know, home from a church he doesn't have to go to and all. And when I mean they were convinced, I mean they were convinced. I cannot tell you how many times I saw this take and how many times they legit thought it would upset Chris. I mean, they do realize he had to consent to acting in this, right? He gave the okay to film the scene and he filmed it, no issues whatsoever. If it would upset him so bad, why the hell did he agree to filming it? This is all topped onto the fact that Chris himself as Star-Lord is barely in the final film. Oops, spoilers! He's in maybe the first 50 minutes, and then has never seen the rest of it. This small appearance got a lot of people pissy at him, and then took said piss on him just for being in the film at all. Have you ever seen an actor get shit on just for getting roles in films? This is ridiculous at this point. On a day, on a time of tour, taking the piss on Chris Pratt, just just seeing it again. Uh, you know what? You know what? It's just formulaic at this point. I think I've beaten the skulls of everyone by now. Twitter does not like Chris Pratt. I get it. He does nothing wrong, and then Twitter gets mad at him, and I show, oh, look how angry they are. I know. It's getting old. Man, you, you know, Ryan Gosling doesn't have to put up with this shit. This day in particular, another tweet shitting on Chris went viral. Again. Getting hundreds of thousands of updutes and retweets. Telling how I would just replace him, nobody would notice, and press him with, Who the hell is that? I I'm not even joking, I have no who clue that who that is. He probably has a name, but it looks like he was made by the competitor of the generic white man factory Chris came from. I'm too lazy to look who he is too, because he has no relevance on anything here. But anyway, this is another case of thousands of people taking the piss out on Chris. For you guessed it, being this list of things. Wait, wait. There's... There's something on the way. Something on the horizon. Could, could it be? Someone... Someone has had enough of this shit. Someone has come to set things straight. Who... Who is it? Who is this challenger approaching? It's... It's James Gunn! In the flesh! Wait. Wait, no, 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 that, 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 that's not right. In the text! He's come to put his foot down on this shit once and for all. For what? Because of your made-up, utterly false beliefs about him? For something that someone else told you about him that's not true? Chris Pratt would never be replaced as Star-Lord. But if he ever was, we would all be going with him. The Twitter thread then erupted into flames. It's sheer chaos right now. One half is rooting for him, 
The other half is angry, pissed someone dare come to defend this bagel vibrator. But, but wait, that's not all either. He's not done. He had a bit more to say. So, um, you're cool with him being part of a homophobic church? Or does that not matter because he's making you money? He isn't. I know the church he currently goes to. Do you? The answer is you don't. But you heard from someone who heard from someone who heard from someone where he goes to church. So you decided, yeah, okay, I'll believe this terrible thing I heard online about this celebrity. Now, the entire Twitter thread has gone full promo mode. Everyone is going nuts, flinging shit at each other, and screeching. It's absolute chaos. And as quickly as he appeared, he refused to elaborate and vanishes into the night. He left quite an impact in his wake. I saw a lot of people hop to Chris's defense after James came and laid down some facts, some getting thousands of likes and retweets. This was fairly recent, might I add you, so I can't say if this will have any lasting impact on Twitter's venomous hatred towards Chris, but I'm glad James could have made some sort of headway in letting people know how things actually are. Godspeed, James. And where is my Scooby-Doo 3, you fucking ha- After three straight years of getting shit on by thousands on Twitter, having his career, his name, and his family run through the ringer, I guess Chris has just finally had enough of this shit and finally decides to say something. In an interview with Men's Fitness, he first spoke on the Instagram post tribute to his wife and how people legit thought it was a dig at his ex-wife and son. He said it really upset him, god I can only imagine why, that people thought he was taking a jab at his son, how it legit made him cry. Some 20 years got their jollies finding out that they made this grown man cry over his own son. He was able to make a joke about it though, saying his publicist was sweating about it, so it was nice that he was still able to find some humor in the situation. And then, he finally says what everyone should have known from the start. He does not attend Hillsong Church. He doesn't even know anybody who attends Hillsong Church. This little factoid should have been known three fucking years ago. And I still don't know where this came from because, again, Elliot's Twitter post never said what church Pride attended. He also goes on to say it was never his intention to be the face of religion in Hollywood. He then also says he's not really a religious person. Uh, okay, Chris. I think what he's trying to say is he's not religious, but he's more so righteous and spiritual. He doesn't do a lot of the stuff like a lot of religious people do. You know, like customs. He doesn't do the traditional things Christians do and is more so in touch with the spiritual side, if that makes sense. I don't really know. He also says that religion has also been used to be oppressive, take from people to control them, and he doesn't like that and he won't adhere to it. Whatever it is, the evil that's in the heart of every man has glommed onto the back of religion and come along for the ride. The reaction to this was mixed. I saw some people sympathize with him, some still got mad at him, and some flat out didn't even believe him. And at this point, I just simply say, just don't bother with this anymore. It's very clear, no matter what Chris says or does, a good chunk of Twitter will hate him for it anyway. Because they've already got their own personal beliefs and theories about him, and no matter how hard he tries, he will never be able to convince them otherwise. Whatever gets them the most clout, that's all that they care about in the end. Now, this is not the end of Chris's feud with Twitter. Oh, far from it, in fact. That will probably not end until the day he or Twitter dies. And even then it'll probably still go on. This video will probably be outdated when more stuff happens in the future, but I thought it'd be best if I ended things here. It's a decent bittersweet way to end this. This just goes to show you the double-edged sword of being a celebrity. Millions of people love you, millions of people love everything you do, but there will always be that group who wants nothing more than to see you fall. 
Some men, women, and everything in between just want to watch the world burn, no matter who has to burn for it. Even if it's Chris Pratt, who has basically done nothing to warrant it. God bless you who watched this video to the very end. Like and subscribe. And for the love of God, go outside.